Job chapter 2. Again, there was a day when the sons of God, the angels, plain and simple, came to present themselves before the Lord. This is in heaven, capital H. No man can walk up to heaven physically. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. So here comes Satan again. And the Lord said to Satan, starting the conversation again, from whence cometh thou? Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Again, he's not omnipresent. Again, like I said, chapter 1. If the Lord will open our eyes, we may see the devil walking by. And when you go by the, the parable of the sower and the seed, Satan comes and gets that word out of their heart. Now, birds are a type of the devil. He started that parable off with birds, and he said it comes to the devil. When you're doing a public ministry, thank God God doesn't open our eyes. Because with that parable, Satan's always there to stop the ministry. Here he is in heaven. And the Lord said to Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in the earth. A perfect, again, that's not 100%. Gives it all his heart. We're all sinners. An upright man. One that feareth God. That's important. It sheweth evil, forbears, gets away, avoids evil. And still he holdeth, that's the first time that word shows up, holdeth fast his integrity. Although thou movest, the only time that word shows up, me against him to destroy him without cause. <clears throat> now we're going to find out that Job's a sinner. God allows the devil to work in Job's life because he wants Job to be acknowledged of his sins. But in the realm of the devil, devil, I just want him destroyed. I want him dead. I want him killed. And God said, to destroy him. That was the motive because God cannot, will not, is unable to lie. Now God is going to use it for the good of Job. The devil is using it because Job worships and fears God and stays away from uh, sin and keeps away from evil. He's uh, beneficial to other people to serve God and the devil don't like that. And when you try to live right and you try to encourage others, and you try to tell them about how to be saved and how to be right with God, the devil doesn't like it and he wants to destroy you. Hey, all that will live God godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That suffering doesn't come from God. It comes from the enemy. Job is doing right and he's suffering by the devil. And Satan answered the Lord. And said, skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath, will he give for his life. Now you see how unmerciful and ungracious the devil is. The devil just killed his children, took his livestock, took everything he had, killed, slaughtered, had an enemy come in and steal. Wiped everything of possessions of Job and his children. Wiped it away. God says, hey, you, you know, what do you think of him? Job's like, I mean, the Satan's like, all right, let me at his skin. Let me touch his flesh. The devil bounds and enjoys when people suffer. And when you suffered in chapter one, Chapter 2, he ain't happy to it. You suffer. And when the people say, Satan rules, Satan number one, you're a fool that you don't know nothing. Because when the devil bites you into hell because he's deceived you, he's not going to apologize at all. And you might hear him in hell, and I don't know, I'm speculating, so you don't have to believe it, but you might hear him in hell laughing because he's glad that all them that keep him comfort. There's a place in Ezekiel, I believe it is, uh, 
maybe Ezekiel, I think it is, but it says type of Egypt, Pharaoh, enjoys those people that have been tormented with him. And that, that Pharaoh is the devil. So he says, touch his flesh. He'll do anything. Men and women have done all they could to keep their lives living stronger. They complain about the health care system, the prices, and yet they will pay for their life. There have been men and women who have mortgaged, have done, sold themselves for the care of a loved one. And the devil's correct. He is not. Notice a lot of times when the devil speaks, he's not wrong. Though the Bible says he's the liar. All that a man hath, will he give for his life? If the richest man in the world today, I don't know who it is, but I mean the absolute richest man in the world, if he was told by the doctors, you have a disease, it's incurable, that guy would spend all that fortune on scientists and, and pharmacy to find a cure. Unless you're saved, and you know where you're going when you die. But, Satan's still speaking. Put forth thy hand, God's hand, now, and touch his bone. Ouch. Bones hurt. Bones is the source of the marrow that, that goes into your blood. It gives your blood strength. And hell. See, Satan goes for the creation. He doesn't go for evolution. He knows the scripture that I am fearfully and wonderfully made by God. The bone. And his flesh. And he will curse thee to thy face. Again, he said. The second time he said. He said, you give him pain and he'll curse you. Sometimes, not all the time, sometimes pain comes from the devil. But God had to allow it. Sometimes pain comes from God, chastisement. Hebrews chapter 12. When God chastises us for our sins. For correction. Sometimes we cause our own pain by our sins. That's the study of pain. But that's a tool of the devil. I'll break him by pain. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. Do whatever you do to him, but don't kill him. That's a blank check to the devil. But again, look at the faith the Lord has in Job. Go at him. He's a he fears me. He excuses evil. He's perfect and he's all he's upright. He will survive you. And I'm going to help him. Again, one of the Corinthians first said Corinthians, God will not give us anything we cannot handle. That's a frightening verse there, if you ever read that verse. God tells the devil, go ahead, go for it all. I mean, you realize some of the animals in the animal kingdom, if the devil would have you be bitten by one of them, the agony you would have. Some poisons in plants, the agony that they can cause you. So when so went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord. All right, go ahead, get him, but save his life, and Satan's gone. <laughs> That guy is instantly, speedily, I don't know a word quick enough to say, all right, I'm going to go get him. And if God were to tell Satan about you, all right, go ahead. Man, he's gone. Boom. Quick. And I don't know a word quick enough for quicker. Quick is. Quick is it or. Now here's the thing, but save his life so Satan went forth from the present. I don't even think the Lord finished his sentence. And Satan's already turned around and left. 
Satan does not care about anybody, especially those that love God. He's not worth your time, and he's not worth your effort. And I say that seeking mercy and grace of God because I can't handle the devil. God likens him to a, to a lion. Study what, how lions hunt. Study what lions do with their prey. I had a book one time about lions. It's a very good book. It scared me for a while. So went Satan from the presence of the Lord and smote Job. He smoked Job. He didn't call his devils in hell. He did it. All right, with boils. No. Sore boils. Now, I've had two or three boils in my lifetime. They're not always sore, but they were sore at times. According to the passage of the Holy Spirit, those boils that he had, plural, I had one, then I, it came away, and I had another one, and it went away, I think I had a third one. Boils, and they were all sore. See how merciful the devil is? Not only did he give him a boil, but he gave him boils. Not only did he give him boil, he gave him sore boils. From the sole of his foot, that's the bottom of your foot, you walk. Onto his crown, and that's his head. Job was covered in sore boils. Thanks to the devil. Pussy, gooey, and I'm telling you, a, a, a boil is disgusting. I have, I've had one of those things to shoot across the room. Full force. They smell. You got to be careful because other people can be infected by your boils. Not a pleasant thing. Thank God I haven't had anything like what Job has. And he took him a pot shirt. And that's a piece of uh, pottery that's broken. I don't know why he took a pot shirt to scrape himself with all. The pus, the goo, he's taking a piece of broken pottery and he's scraping his flesh to clean it. I didn't do that. I, I can't venture that. And he sat down among the ashes. Ashes and ashes, dust to dust. I am just dead. There is no life. Ashes at the judgment seat of Christ. That's a loss. Then said his wife unto him, Mrs. Joe. She's not even given a name. Does thou still retain thy integrity? My boys and my daughters are dead. Maybe her favorite servants are gone. Curse God and die. Great wife. You know what side she's on? She's on the devil's side. That's exactly what the devil told God. Put forth your hand, put forth that head. You curse you to, to your faith. Job's wife did that. There are times wives like Job's wife and Eve, they ought not to talk at all. There are good wives like Ruth, Esther, and uh, Pilate's wife. She walked up to Pilate and said, don't have anything to do with that guy today, honey. I've had dreams about him. Job's wife needs to shut up. The guy has been beaten. The guy is sore. The guy has been destroyed. And in comes his support. In comes his help me. In comes the one who's supposed to be the most tolerant for him to help her. Go, go ahead and curse God and die, will you? Drop dead. That's what you're telling him. Don't be a wife like that. Because you know what? That's it of Joe's wife. You don't ever hear her about again in this book. Job's children are going to be resurrected because they're dead. You don't see Job's wife. She's a Jezebel. But he said unto her, Thou speak as one of the foolish women speaketh. You ought not to talk like that. That's the truth. What? <laughs> what? I mean, I can just imagine she shrugged her shoulder. She's doing something for him to say, what? Shall we 
we see good at the hand of God? Do we get everything blessed? Shall we get all the cows, the camels, the, the, the sheep, the children, the, the wine, the food, the house? Should we get all that? Okay, yeah. And shall we not receive evil? God gives us good and evil. Now, evil is not sin. God cannot sin. What is evil? Losing the animals, the fire coming down, death of the servant, the children dying, the loss, the misery, the pain, the suffering is evil. It is the consequences of sin. Job's sin, we're going to learn it later, but the consequences of the evil here is, thank you Adam, thank you Eve. Remember, Job is the first book to be written. And he shows up, we're going to get into more. He shows up in the time of Esau in the Bible. But we'll look at that in a moment. I jumped ahead of myself. So we get good and evil. In all this, did not Job sin with his lips? He didn't curse God. He didn't blame God. He didn't cuss God. He just sat there and scraped the pus. Yeah, you're a foolish woman. Get away from me. Now, when Job's three friends, oh boy, these three friends, there's actually four of them, but one guy stays quiet. One guy is younger than, than all of them, and respectfully, he just sits back and listens to them. He honors his elders. And when he finally had it, and that Job shut up and won't say anything else, then he finally says, listen, you know, you guys are older than I am, I am younger, now I'm putting my three cents in. And then he blasts them. Then God steps in the picture. Heard all this evil, death, pain, suffering, that was come upon him, Job, they came everyone from his own place, Eliphaz the Temanite. Now look at Eliphaz the Temanite. Now that dates Genesis 36, 9. That dates the book of Job. Genesis 36. Thirty-six, nine, thirty-eight. This will date the book of Job. And I have right here, and I don't know what the dates, I'm not that good, but it says B.C. 1796. Alright? So, what is it? Thirty-six, nine. And there was the generations of Esau. You know who Esau is, right? That's Jacob's brother of Isaac and Rebekah, correct? Okay, so that's Esau. In Mount Seir, Esau is Edom. Same person. These are the generations of Esau. The father of the Edomites. That's the first time that shows up in Mount Seir. These are the name of Esau's sons. All right, Esau, the brother of Jacob. Eliphaz, there he is. That's the one Job's friend. I'll show you in a moment. The son of Adah, the wife of Esau. Rule, the son of Beshmith, the wife of Esau. The sons of Eliphaz, there he is, Job's friend, were Teman. So when you come back over to Job chapter 2, it says Eliphaz, the Temanite. That Teman is his son. We're dealing with the grandson of Esau. Around the time of Jacob and Esau. That's the time. It's the first book written in the Bible. And Bildad the Shuhite, Zophar the Namanite, for they had made. What do you call when you go make a, you go to the doctor? You know that came out of the King James Bible, an appointment to gather to come mourn with him and to come for him. There's an appointment made in the Bible right there. They came to mourn and comfort. Why? All the loss. Now we don't know if they know about the boils yet, but definitely the word got out. He's lost his sheep, his camels, and his children died. Job, we're going to come over, we're going to comfort with you, we're going to mourn with you. Now, I don't know if they know about the boils yet, but watch what happens. And when they lifted up their eyes afar off, they knew him not. 
That man is so infiltrated with boils, they can't even recognize him. I'm going to say, and I'm going to stick my neck out, but the guy's just boils all over. That would probably mean in his eye sockets, his lips, his nose, his hands, everything on his blood, from the crown of his head down to the soles of his, his feet. He's just covered in blood. When they see him far off, they don't even know it's Joe. You see how wicked the devil is? They knew him not. They lifted up their voice and wept. And they rent every one his mantle and sprinkled dust upon their heads toward heaven. That just pictures the tearing of the flesh. I am just, just sackcloth. I am just in the ashes. Nothing lower can I get. So they sat down with him upon the ground, no chair, sitting on the dark, seven days and seven nights. And none spake a word unto him, for they saw that his grief was very great. They're not even talking, they're just, and the Bible says, you know what? Sometimes you don't have to open your mouth for a grieving person. Just sit there and be with him. Listen to him. Now, Job is going to speak in chapter 3. Chapter 4, they're going to start talking and then it's going to get ridiculous. Now, let me tell you off right now in chapter 2. These three friends are correct. Many ways. You can darkly use what they say. Problem. Not all they say is about Job. They're going to count Job as a wicked sinner that deserves what he got. No. So when we go through the, the, the book of Job now, and we study it out, and you lay out and say, well, you know, we, you're saying it's correct, it's proper. Yeah, but maybe not for Job, and God's going to get angry with them by Job 42. There is truth. But there's no truth in it with Job. We'll study that out as Lord willing.